So in one of my earlier videos, I walked you guys through my process for creating procedural gobos within Cinema 4D and Redshift. Now, a few of you all had questions and said, hey, Nick, this is great, but how do I actually create animated gobos? So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys two different processes that I use. Let's get in and check it out. All right, so I'm gonna to put together a quick little tutorial to show you guys how to create animated gobo lights for your 3D scenes. So all that I have here, if I jump out of my camera, this is just a rabbit sculpture that I'd done in ZBrush, just a little guy hanging on a ledge. We have a wall and a uh, single camera, so super simple. So let's jump back into our camera, which is just a front facing view of our sculpture. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna do, as I always do, we're gonna grab a dome light right down here, uh, come over to the dome light object texture input, uh, just load any HDRI that you guys have available. I just have one here local on my machine. And then I'm just gonna come in here and just kind of rotate this around. There's no right or wrong uh, to this. You just kind of want to pick an orientation that gives you some kind of nice ambient lighting and you get some nice little shadows. Uh, let me see, for our purposes, we can get something that's a little front lit here. Rotate around. Okay, let me bring that back just a little bit. All right, perfect. Got a little bit of light coming here from the, the side, hitting the front of our rabbit and some back shadows on the wall. That's exactly what I want. Uh, second thing we want to do is we want to add our spotlight. Um, so we have our spotlight populated in the scene. Now to do our animated gobo, we need to add a plane. Uh, come down here to your planes orientation. We're going to change that to the Z axis. Now, two things we need to do is we need to go to our plane, right click, come down here to rigging tags, constraint. We want to check parent and in the target for the parent, we want to add our spotlight. Now we need to come over here to our spotlight animation tags target well what do we want our spotlight to target it's going to be the body of our sculpture so we have that there we can see that the spotlight's turned into the sculpture it's exactly what we want so now we can grab this spotlight and anywhere we move this in the scene that plane is going to be parented to our spotlight which is perfect um only other thing we need to do is grab the plane and just move this down on the z-axis just to create a little bit of separation from the plane and the spotlight I'm also just gonna change the size of this a little bit. I'm gonna make the width 200 and say the height 300. Um, so we have all this set up. Obviously our spotlight's in the scene, but if you look over here in the render view, we're not seeing anything because the plane is, uh, well, it has no texture. It's full plane, full opacity. So to change that, let's go over here to materials. We're gonna create a new Redshift standard material. Drop that on your plane. Go on ahead and open up your node editor. Um, let's grab the material right now. We're going to remove the base color, remove reflections, come over here to your node editor, double click. Let's search for a texture node. Let's add this. We're also going to double click and add a ramp node. Um, this just kind of helps us control some of the output values from our texture. So input, alt input, and then the ramp we're going to plug into the opacity channel of the material. As soon as we do that, boom, you see the spotlights come through. Um, since we have no texture currently loaded, it's just 100% black, and so it's 100% uh, opaque. You can see through that plane at the moment. But we wanna do, come over here, click on your texture node, then find the uh, general tab, path. What we wanna do is load in, this is the first option I'm gonna show you guys, is load in an image sequence. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can go about this. So I just searched online and looked for, I think leaves blowing in wind and just found a video segment that was uh, free stock footage, downloaded it. Uh, you can certainly go out there with your camera, your iPhone, a DSLR, uh, shoot some of your own footage. Um, the only thing you need to make sure is that you wanna have, uh, you wanna re uh, move all the saturation from the video footage before you export out a PNG sequence. You can do this in Adobe Premiere, After Effects, really any editing footage that you have, um, but you wanna have uh, black and white and gray values to kind of play with, right? So you see we have this texture, it's loaded in, we have this loaded in our ramp. Um, usually what I would do is I don't like a uh, true black and white values, so I'll kind of bring these down a little bit. So black I'll bring to uh, 10%, we'll do white down to 90%. It's just not really, you know, within uh, within nature, finding actual black and white values. So we kind of uh, we kind of bring those down a little bit. But what we will notice is uh, I've added actually. So my scene, I have 300 frames. Just kind of expanded that out, which you can do down here. You start with 90, obviously. Oop, not one, 90. 
We're just gonna do 300 just so we can kind of see a little bit of this animation play through. So over here in our texture node, what we need to do is instead of image, we need to click over here on animation. We need to turn this on. So the mode, uh, we're gonna hit this on a loop. You can do simple, which just plays through. Ping pong, which basically goes all the way to the end and then end uh, frame back to your first frame. We want this thing to loop. So we're gonna hit the mode to loop, uh, leave our timing at frame. And then the last little thing we need to check down here is the tech frame. So if we click on that, all of a sudden our end frames have gone to 271, our start frame is at zero. Now, if I go back and hit play, in the render view, you'll notice these leaves and this texture animating on our scene, which is exactly what we want. So that's perfect. Um, I'm gonna also change the color space, come over here and change it to raw. Um, and you know, with your ramp, the nice thing is, is you can kind of clamp down your black and white values. So your white or what's kind of the leaves that you're seeing right now. So if I wanted to make those a little bit more pronounced, like higher contrast, I could slide in that white. If I wanted to kind of fade those out a little more, I could bring in my black or gray. Uh, you really can kind of just like play with this to your heart's desire. And then again, you can come up here with your spotlight. You can move this around in your scene to kind of get a look that you want. Maybe the leaves look a little bit too big. We can bring that plane in a little bit closer to our scene. Another little trick that I'll say is, let's say if you brought that plane in a little bit too far, and then all of a sudden we can see it right here in the render view. Um, if you right click on your plane, go to render tags, RS object, override visibility and turn off primary ray. Now all of a sudden that's gone. So you kind of have a little bit more liberty to just move this plane wherever you see fit. Uh, I'm gonna bring that back out just a little bit, grab my spotlight, just find a nice spot for this. All right, let's say with that, um, I'm gonna come over here to the spotlight itself, just do a little bit of editing. So the cone angle, I wanna bring that a little bit wider. I wanna increase the fall off. And then I'm gonna come over here to details and just add a little bit of softness. And you can see if I have no softness, this is super crisp and high contrast for the texture. If I just kick that up a little bit, uh, it looks a little bit more like it's leaves coming through from a window at a distance, right? Um, and then with all those tweaks, just kind of move the spotlight around a little bit more again to get a look and feel that I wanna go for. But yeah, now again, if we hit play in our render view, you can see these leaves and this texture is kind of moving around um, against our object and on our scene, which is exactly what we want. So the second way that I was gonna show you guys is really if we come back in here in the texture, double click in your node editor and just search for max on noise. Um, this one is gonna be a little bit more, again, the procedural, it's not as organic of an, an option, but we'll add the max on noise, always plug these things into a ramp, alt input, turn into the opacity. But now you notice the scene is kind of switched over, right? So the cool thing about this though, we've got all these different types of noises, wavy turbulence, displacement. Um, you know, let's go displace turbulence. We can come down here to the input of the noise. Maybe we want to increase the size of this a little bit. Um, but what you'll notice is there's this animation tab. So if I turn this animation tab to one and let's go to our ramp, maybe just kind of crunch these whites and blacks a little bit more. We get a little more contrast there, bring in our white a little bit more. All right, perfect. Now, if we hit play, you'll notice that noise is now animating within our scene on the back wall as well. So the, both of these ways, you can get some pretty cool options. You know, the max on noise, I would say, is more almost like a liquid fluid sim. You can get some cool stuff. Like if you were in, uh, there's like a pool or a body of water that was nearby and getting some cool reflections, um, you know, plugging back in some sort of uh, actual video footage of some leaves or I don't know, it could be people walking past a window. But yeah, so this is the two ways that I go about if I'm looking to create some animated gobos for my scene. I hope you guys found this super helpful. Uh, if you happen to have any questions, just pop them down in the comments. And yeah, you guys take it easy.